Say the word tapas to an American chef, and chances are they'll respond by thinking Spain. But say tapas to a Spaniard, and most likely they'll come back with Andalucía. So what are tapas? While the actual origins may be lost to history, many people believe the tapas custom actually originated right here in Andalucía. But what are tapas? And how did this tradition of tapeando begin? Going from bar to bar, catching up with friends, having a little bite of something delicious, and a glass of chilled fino sherry, or nowadays, more often, beer, to wash it down. According to Enrique Becerra, owner of Becerra Restaurant and Tapas Bar in Sevilla, tapas began in aristocratic clubs in Sevilla where no drinks were served. Waiters were sent out for a glass of sherry to quench the noble thirst. Returned with a glass covered with a tapa, a lid, on which there might be a slice of delicious jamón ibérico or a slice of Andalucía's traditional goat's milk cheese. The glasses of cherry wines come tap with a paper for the dust of the street. But uh, when the days of wind, the paper was flying. What made the people of the bar put in, uh, on, the, on the paper bread and ham or cheese or chorizo? Tapas might be as simple as a plate of almonds fried in the region's best olive oil, or a plate of green olives, or big red shrimp grilled a la plancha on the flat top. And any kind of fried fish is always welcome. Or the Spanish classic tortilla, a thick omelet packed with potatoes and onions, cooked in olive oil. Tapas are often self-contained dishes, and the way they are served will influence the recipe. Are they appetizers? Snacks? Finger food? Canapes? Tapas are all of those and more, a model of the easygoing Andalusian way of life, and an example of the region's incredibly mixed background, and a great way to experience a lot of different flavors in one sitting, or standing, as they often do. A quintessential tapa, one that's offered just about everywhere, from the most down-home taverns to upscale bars in the sleek hotel lobbies, is simply called tortilla, not to be confused with Mexican tortillas. It is a sort of flat omelet made with potatoes and onions richly fried in olive oil. Maria Garcia Morillo makes her tortilla in the classic way, starting with plenty of olive oil. In this case, she uses Castillo de Canena's own picual. She adds potatoes to the hot oil, then onions and a little salt, and cooks the vegetables together until they are thoroughly softened. Three eggs are beaten together, and then the potatoes and onions, drained of their oil, are added to the egg mixture. Now a little fresh oil is added to the pan, then the eggs, and finally the moment of truth. It takes great dexterity to flip over this tortilla, but Maria has been doing it about once a day for many years. It is then cut in wedges for service. Indeed, some authorities claim it as the true height of Spanish and Andalusian gastronomy. Tapas can also be avant-garde and modern. At his restaurant Aponiente in Puerto de Santa Maria, Chef Ángel León elevates the humble sardine, a worker's lunch staple. He grills it gently over a surprising combination of olive pits and pine cone scales that imbue the fish with their fragrant smoke as it's brought to table. For this dish, we have marinated the sardine in olive oil, uh, sherry vinegar and salt only. We will finish the sardine by smoking it with these olive pits and pine cone scales. It will give us a very interesting layer of flavor when we smoke the sardine. So we take the roasted eggplant and we spread it over a slice of Maghrevi bread. That is a bread that we prepare here and it is olive oil based. Some salt. Some oil. We place it here, directly, so that it can be taken into the dining room. The idea is not to smoke the product that much. The fishing industry tends to prepare their products with a very heavy flavor of smoke, and, and we are all very used to this, but the idea here is to have a very subtle flavor that seeps into the fat of the sardines, and therefore have a, a pleasant flavor that lingers in your mouth. At Restaurante Santo, in the heart of historic Sevilla, Chef Baltasar Diaz offers a tapa that is made from foie gras, smoked eel, and caramelized eggs, served with a cream cheese spread. 
elegant, simple, and delicious. Chef Dani Garcia at Kalima in Marbella serves a tapa that epitomizes the very function of tapas and that it always sparks conversation. A playful and flavorful twist on caviar. Of the form of the caviar is, is here, that is a very uh, special truffle caviar, it's a black truffle caviar. And we put here. And then we have a, a almond caviar, okay, with almond, the white caviar, okay, and, and, and it's a very special joke. And, and the white caviar is almond, the, the black caviar is a truffle, and the, the real caviar are a, a cream. This is the Kalima Rio Frio caviar. Most people assume that tapas are small portion dishes, and in most cases, that is true. Uh, we serve tapas just at the bar. But sometimes they are served as platters to be shared at the table, like at La Azotea in Sevilla. Because we got a really small kitchen, at the tables we serve half plates or big plates. What we want, what we explain to the people in the sit, uh, they have to share. I mean, they don't have to share, but we suggest to share because it's more fun. And uh, you know, that thing they share, let me try this, let me. So we, we put the plate at the middle always. Shared platters are not only a style of eating, but also a way of socializing. But remember that traditionally, these are small bites. Tapas don't take the place of a meal and they're more like a way of being sociable before the real meal begins. A favorite tapa at Castillo de Canena is a ceviche of small raw shrimps with diced vegetables and apples. It's a simple dish of combining high quality ingredients, diced red onion, sweet red pepper, and the tender sweet little shrimps that come from just off the mouth of the Guadalquivir River. Larger shrimps could be used, cut into smaller pieces, but they must be as fresh as possible, not frozen. Maria adds minced cilantro and minced chives, and finely grated ginger for an unusual touch, along with salt, ground cumin, and a mere whisper of cayenne. Freshly squeezed lime juice, and a healthy dose of diced fresh apple, and it all gets stirred together, piled into a cocktail glass. And finally, a good dose of Castillo de Canena's Arvequina olive oil. Plato. At Malaga's Michelin-starred Café de Paris, José Carlos García prepares a hard-shell clam called concha fina, which, the chef says, is very commonly served as a tapa in bars all over Malaga. It's prepared very simply, in order to preserve and savor the fresh flavor of raw clams. So the first thing we do in order to open the clam is scare it. We scare the clam by giving it a couple of gentle knocks on each side of the shell, so the muscle contracts. And then we cut it in half. We have two even sides. This is the first step. So let's knock it and quickly cut it in half. So now we have to cut. There is a muscle on each side and we have to cut both of them out of the shell. So this part here is the only part we don't eat. All we are going to do is add a couple of drops of lime, a little bit of pepper, and we will pair it with a cocktail, but not a regular one. It is a cocktail prepared with a very innovative and contemporary technique. We have mixed tequila, lime, and triple sec, and a little bit of soy lecithin, and with the aerator, we will incorporate air to form a light foam. Usually, this is drunk as a liquid, but we will be serving it instead on top of our clam. This dish is meant to be eaten with your hands, from hand to mouth. And once again, you can see how we have used contemporary modern techniques with a traditional local preparation. At Restaurante Choco in Córdoba, Quisco García makes a similar statement with a single oyster. This too is a dish that is served as a tapa. We take the oyster and marinate it in a little bit of pepper, soy sauce and vinegar from Montilla for just a bit, five, six seconds at the most, just so it acquires the flavors without overpowering it. A contrast that we really like is a lemon peel, 
Candid that we have placed right here. And now my favorite part. This is the oyster's own water from its shell. And a little bit of soup or consomme made with Iberico ham. It is very strange when you put it in your mouth because you can get the briny notes of the oyster and the salty ones of the ham that strangely complement each other, uh, bringing out really interesting flavors in the oyster. We also place a little bit of the water from the oyster, which we have uh, aerated with a turbo mix. Got these oysters with an Iberico ham broth and cured lemon. This dish would be especially delicious with a glass of dark and fragrant Oloroso sherry to contrast with the briny directness of the oyster. One distinctive contribution to tapas gastronomy comes from Granada. Local food writer Pablo Amate explained that in Granada, the idea of a free tapa with each drink still holds true, and the tapas are often very elaborate indeed. Granada may be the last place in the world where food comes free with drinks, but it's a most welcome tradition. One, two, three drinks, each with a different tapa. And then it's time to move on to the next lively scene. One tapa per person and a different one with each drink. Then everyone enjoys tasting and sharing. The idea is to keep moving. Stop at this bar for a plate of coquinas, tiny clams with equally tiny artichokes. Go on to another bar to taste the boquerones in vinagre, white anchovies marinated in aged sherry wine vinegar, garlic and parsley. In other parts of Andalusia, you have to pay for your tapas, but you'll still find it a great way to dine out without spending a lot of money. One important piece of the puzzle. Tapas are definitely, and above all else, a social occasion. No one ever goes out for tapas on their own, unless they expect to discover a collection of similar-minded friends. Enrique Becerra explains another important aspect. One tapa never suffices, and one bar for tapas seldom suffices either. The action of change of bar, change of company, uh, talking with the friends, with the family, uh, normally, uh, when in Seville we say we are going to tapeo, uh, it's a minimum of three or four bars, and each bar has its own specialities. We will start normally with the bars of uh, seafood and charcuterie. Later we change for a bar of fried fish, and the last bar is normally the bar of a, of a restaurant, because uh, we finish with the cooking tapas and a small dessert. Americans may be captivated by tapas, and we have adopted them with enthusiasm. Many American restaurants have discovered that putting four or five tapas on a menu, maybe even featuring them as a mini-tasting menu, is a great way to satisfy loyal customers.